All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about useful strand properties um, and these five in particular. But before I start, I want to look at this strand here at the watch point. And what we can see here is that we only have two properties, point position and strand offset. The point position should be pretty obvious. We need point positions to define the shape of the strand. And then that strand offset is simply telling it where does it start and where does it end. But the whole construct strands might be for another video. In this video, I just want to talk about some properties. And so the first one is strand ratio. And uh, this is where it gets a little bit hacky to begin with because this compound here is not available in the tab menu for some reason it used to be there it's not there anymore so you can grab it from this uh, compound here create strands from counts and copy and paste it but I've already got it so I'm gonna insert this here and now looking at the watch point we can see point ratio is here and we also have the data here from this port so let's look at this so here is our data and uh, it almost looks like it's sort of a u value or a normalized position along the strand but that's a bit misleading it's not that what it is, is kind of a normalized position within the array. And what I mean by that is if I take those, I don't know why I can't draw on here. It's a bit weird. Mm. Works now. If we take those indices and divide them by the number of points minus one so we've got five points minus one is four this is essentially what gets us the value here and so on so what we can do with this is we can use this point ratio to for instance say oh i want to displace all the points but I want to weight them differently. So it's best to show it. Displace points. Let's say I want to simply move them all to the right. Let's say I move them in X. Mm, just one unit. Use this as my displacement. And if I do that, all the points will wrong port all the points will move but if i use this as a weight i can define where this actually happens so this one gets no effect at all has no effect on this point at all and this one full effect and then i can use an f curve uh, in between here to uh, control exactly what's happened and that's strand ratio next up is strand length so I'm going to insert this and now looking at the watch point we see point length we also have strand length which is uh, well the point length is of course a point per point property strand length is per strand and I'm going to visualize this data <clears throat> so simply speaking this is just the um, distance from the current point to the start point along the strand and so the last point uh, length value is the actual strand length I could come here and divide the point length by the strand length And then doing that, I get something that looks very much like the point ratio again, but this time it's different because this is, as I said, this is actually 
a normalized position now or normalized distance to the start and um, if I come here and let's say I want to change this third point here so index 2 so I can move this point up and down and we can see that the value changes whereas if I use the point ratio here we can see it doesn't matter where I move this I can move it even before the second point and it's still going to be 0.5 because as I said this is based on the index in the array okay Let's look at point size. Uh, actually, I'm going to remove this node. Point size. For this, we don't need a specific compound. This is just a set geo property node. Just put this to point size. Insert it here. And I'm just going to set some sizes for these points. So I'm going to use a sequence array. I know I've got five points, so a size is five. Step. Uh, I don't know, point 0.1 maybe. Visualize it. And now I can use this as my data. So I've set this point size to the corresponding point, but I don't see anything. And maybe I'm going to hide those points here. Um, I don't see any change in the appearance of the strand and that's because the strand doesn't really have a shape yet so we need to uh, add another node set strand shape and there we go we've now changed the width of our strand based on those uh, point sizes and these these are really uh, radii so if you just multiply by two you get the width of that strand at that point in scene units right and this black little uh, display area here is because it, the first one is just zero so if we do a tiny bit bigger it's all good and we could use shuffle array to sort Reorder uh, the array so we have some sort of a random distribution. Maybe put that here so we can uh, see that this is simply just interpolating between points linearly, and then that's what gives us this shape. Next up, we've got update strand spaces, and that is just like the strands length one. A rebel pack node so if you don't have rebel pack installed you need it for this so now that I've added this in let's hide this for the moment and get the points back so now that I've got this if we look at the watch point We have now point binormal, point normal, and point tangent. So these are the basis vectors. And I could use this compound here. I also need the point position. And, uh, so these are my tangents. But it's important to note that with this configuration, if I just look at the normal we don't get anything and the same would be true for the point binormal and that is because the point tangent because this uh, strand is just going straight up pretty much a zero one zero for each tangent we've also got the up vector set to zero one zero so we can't really figure out what's going on here so I'm just gonna say that I want the normal to point down the z-axis and change that here and now this should give me normals down the z-axis and also the binormal which should be perpendicular to both the previous vectors like that so that's cool so let's look at 
a example. Um, that's a bit more interesting. Let's say I want to, let's say I want to instance this geometry along that strand. And then I can show you how I can use these vectors. Um, bring in the curve, make it evenly spaced and maybe give it some more points. See what that looks like. And use the point scope. Yep, that's okay. And I also bring in the cube here. And then I'm going to use create instances. I want to instance onto this strand, this cube. And this is what I'm going to get. So now this is just aligned with the world, or as it uh, is aligned here. But I want to maybe align it along the strand. So what I could do is use this update strands basis. I'm going to set this back to 010. Use that on my strand here. And nothing has changed yet. However, if I use another node with it, this one right here, another Rebel Pack node, then you can now see that they're aligned along the strand. And this is because we've got these vectors here, uh, these properties on the strand. And we could even move our points around. And yeah, this should still work. So that's that. And then finally, point strand index. This is again a node that you want to grab from this compound here if you want to create this property and it's not already on your object. But what I want to do is I'm actually going to get rid of this stuff. I don't need this. And uh, I want to create strands along the normals of this um, curve that I created, or this strand here. So I've got the normals, so I can simply use create strands along normals, like that. There we go, we've got a bunch of strands. I want to see those points. Make them a little longer maybe four per strand something like this actually hide the curve here <clears throat> so looking at the watch point again we can see that the point strand index already exists so sometimes the property that you want is already there it depends on the compound that you're using or it depends on how you created your strands so in this case we don't even need that uh, node that i just showed you we just want to work with the property and we could just simply just use a get geo property node but we can also use get strand structure it's a bit quicker to do it that way we've got this bottom port here and i will use print points again to view the data for that i need the point positions here and there we go this is the point strand index and what this allows us to do is set a property per strand uh, because if we look at this what this is telling us is that for each point giving us the index of the strand that this point belongs to so all these points belong to strand index 4 and so on 
So I want to set the uh, strand width or strand size as we've done previously, but I want to set it randomly for each strand. And so, not for each point, but for each strand. And so <clears throat> I can use random value. Let's say I want values between point 0.1 and point 0.6. And I can use this point strand index for my index here. And then now I simply want to set a point size. I'm going to copy and paste this. Set the point size with this data on this strand here. And we still don't see anything because remember we need to set the strand shape. Like that. I'm going to uncheck this. Mm, Two-sided lighting. And there we go. We have a different width for each strand. And I could control this by changing this here, changing the seed. I've actually made a video a while ago where I'm using the same principle to change the strand color per strand. So it's the same deal. You can check that out if you're interested. But I want to do one final thing. First of all, I think I don't want to look at this anymore and not at this. I want to maybe align them with the along the strand facing sideways. Right now they're just pointing down the z-axis again, similar to our um, our instances example. And for that I can use the point strand index again, but this time I'm using get from array. I want these indices, however I'm going to get it from the point binormal here of the curve. And now I just need to set the point normal like that and plug that in here. And now they're aligned along strand using the point strand index. And that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully that was interesting and uh, thanks.